What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Underground Growers. I'm still your main vein, Iceberg Steel. Ain't nothing changed. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make CBD canna oil. I have two types of canna oil that I make. I have a CBD canna oil and I have a, a high potency canna oil. So the CBD canna oil is more of a relaxing, you know, something you can rub on your uh, muscles for a pain reliever. I have um, elderly friends and friends that have been shot, friends that, you know, going through some kind of physical therapy. So they like to use that can of oil just to rub on certain parts of their body that may, they may need some muscle relaxing or some pain relieving. You can also use it in your teas and, you know, your, your coffees or cook with it, make some cookies, however you want to use it. There's it's multiple ways you can use CBD can of oil. Now my high potency can of oil um, is more for those ones that are looking for that high, you know. Sometimes the one that makes the brownies, the cookies, you know, the, the edibles, you know, whatever you want to do to, and you want to feel it. That's for my, that high potency can of oil is for those users. So um, I have a lot of families. That's why I keep my families because I know for future references, I want to make some CBD can of oil. I mean, I, like I said, I have a lot of um, friends and family who uh, go to these dispensaries and other places to buy a can of oil and um, let them don't have that those funds or those resources to be able to acquire the, that, that, can, that CBD can of oil. And that's where I come into play, you know, a lot of this, you know, they have their uh, medical marijuana licenses and uh, I just give it to them. I don't charge them for it because other than, other than me making that, that CBD uh, can of oil, I would just be throwing those fan leaves away. So that's why I hold on to my uh, CBD can of oil. But uh, my high potency can of oil, you know, is for more of my use. So I kind of hang out tend to hang on to that and the like like I said the difference between my uh, CBD uh, can of oil is I just use all fan leaves like I collect all my fan leaves I keep all my fan leaves for this particular reason to make the CBD oil because I just use fan leaves and you know whatever little trim from wet trim or dry trim I might sprinkle some of that in there I don't want to make have it too potent just because of who I'm giving the um, CBD oil to and I want to keep it as a CBD. So I just use fan leaves. Basically, 99.7 of the uh, the uh, batch that's going into making my CBD oil, can of oil, is just fan leaves. Now, when we get into my high potency uh, can of oil, the the amount of, I mean, the marijuana that's going into that is from my wet trim and my dry trim. And everything that's in that batch has trichomes on it. I mean, when I'm trimming, when I'm wet trimming, I'm wet trimming uh, sugar leaves, you know. And I might get some bud clippings here and there that I didn't accidentally cut a couple buds off and I'll just throw them in with that wet trim. <clears throat> After my plant is finished with the drying mode and ready to go into the jars to the curing process, I'll do a dry trim. And I'll take that dry trim, uh, which means cutting off my the, the excess sugar leaves, you know, every now and again I might clip a bud and it might fall in. I just take that dry trim, throw it in with the wet trim, you know, and that'll be for my high potency kind of oil. A lot of people tend to take that that wet trim and that dry trim and you can put them in pre-rolls, you know, and smoke it, however you want to do it. But yeah, I take my wet trim, dry trim, put it together and produce a high potent um, can of oil or a can of butter. You know, it's, I have two different uh, types of can of butter. Uh, I have the CBD can of butter and I am use just fan leaves with making that can of butter and with my high potency uh, can of butter I use the same the uh, wet trim the dry trim to incorporate into my high potency 
you know, can of butter. So it's two different kinds of ways to make the, you know, two different methods in making the can of oil and the can of butter to, and whichever CBD, high potency, if you're making can of oil or can of butter, it's two different ways to make the can of oil and the can of butter. But like I said, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make videos on for each subject. I'm gonna have the video for the CBD can of oil or CBD can of butter. The same for the high potency can of oil and the high potency can of butter. But back to this episode, I wanna make it too long. Don't shorten it up, give you a lot of detail. Hope you enjoy this video. Hope it's knowledgeable and you learn from it, you know, we're going to leave it at that. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the video of making the CBD can of oil. Okay, YouTube, I'm back. Right now I'm going to explain to you everything that we're going to be using to make this CBD can of oil. I use the organic, unrefined, virgin coconut oil. Um, you can use pretty much any kind of oil you want to use. I learned how I learned how to make this kind of oil using coconut oil, so I pretty much stuck with it. And I have, like I said, I have the virgin coconut oil. It's unrefined, organic, and this is what I use. But like I said, you can use any type of oil you know you want to use. And I use for each cup. Now, I'll go ahead and explain this now. For each cup of coconut oil, you can use seven, gra uh, seven grams, 14 grams, you know, however, it just depends on how potent, how much potent you want that kind of oil to be. So however much um, marijuana you put into it or trim you put into it, um, that's how potent it's going to be. I'm going to be using, because I have so much of these fan leaves, um, I'm just pretty much trying to get rid of them all. I'm going to be using about an ounce of fan leaves to every cup of coconut oil. So we're going to, for every cup, for every cup of coconut oil that I'm using, I'm going to be using an ounce of, of the fan leaves to make my CBD oil. Another thing that I'm going to be adding into it is this sunflower liquid lecithin. Now what this lecithin does, it helps for everything to mix equally. It means that you won't have, you know, the best part on the bottom and the less, the less of the part on the top. You know, it, it, it makes it so where from the bottom to the top, all the way around it's the same potency all the way around whatever you decide to put your can of oil in everything won't sink to the bottom everything will be equally distributed throughout your container now it just depends on how much you have you know i have a lot of families in here i haven't weighed it out yet we'll get to that in a minute i'm going to weigh out an ounce uh, for each cup, so for every ounce I have, I'll make I make me a cup of uh, can of oil. I mean, of coconut oil. Another thing I'm using another pot, so I can uh, set this on my scale and wear it out. And then I have about a medium-sized pan uh, pot to cook this in. So first thing we want to do. Here, just get your fan leaves, and you want to cut your fan leaves up real fine. That's what I got these scissors for. You get your fan leaves, you trim, you put them in a grinder, you um, cut them up with some scissors, doesn't matter. Now, it doesn't matter if these are, if your fan leaves are wet or dry. They can be, they can be wet, uh, what I mean by wet, mean they're not dried out and hard and crispy they're just like fresh off fresh like you freshly cut them off of your plant you know you can use those fan leaves you just want to make sure you chop them up real fine and you get as many as many stems out of it as you possibly can you want to take as much 
as much of the stem leaves out as you possibly can. So, yeah, you just want to get this cut up. So, at this point, I'm just going to make sure all of my uh, fan leaves are cut up as thin as I can get. Okay, now that we I have my um, fan leaves cut up pretty nice and fine here. So, get everything pretty much cut up nice and fine. So, whatever you're putting in, make sure that you have it nice and chopped up. The next thing we're going to, what we're going to do with this now is we're going to decarb it. And decarb it, so we're going to use a cookie sheet uh, for this decarbation. Uh, and what we're going to do is just sprinkle this out onto your, onto your cookie sheet. Now, what decarbing is, is is bringing, helping your marijuana get to the point to where you can infuse it. It's, it's, it's basically like it's starting it up, like a startup. It's basically like a startup for your weed. You just wanna sprinkle this out, however much you got, sprinkle it out onto a cookie sheet. Now, you wanna set your oven to 250 degrees. And once you have the, uh, once it's preset and it's ready to go, you want to put your cookie sheet with your trim on it into the oven. And we're going to time it for 30 minutes. Depends on how much you have. I may go about 45 minutes on mine because I have so much, but it usually takes around 30 minutes. So, seven grams, 14 grams, up to an ounce, you know, I would put it in for about 30 minutes. And that's the, um, the weed decarb. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. That's decarbing your weed. Now, I'll tell you, you can, you can skip this step. You can skip this step and move on to the next step because some people do not decarb their weed it really hasn't been just put to the test. I mean, I don't really see the difference in decarbon and not decarbon, but like I said, I learned the way I learned was and how I was taught was to decarb my weed. I was taught that it helps the weed to be better um, infused. It, has, it opens it up and, and it's better to, uh, it's easier for you to get more out of the weed by decarbing it. Um, I haven't seen any downfall to that. It's been working for me, so I pretty much stuck to it. So what I'm going to do now, like I said, you put your trim on a cookie sheet, set your oven to 250, and we're going to go for 30 minutes in the oven with this. Now, while that's decarbing, sitting in the oven for on 250 degrees uh, for about 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get another cup or two out of this can of oil okay so I, in total i have three cups of coconut oil um trim is finished decarbing at this point your apartment your house is probably really smelly at this point forgot to warn you about that but yeah open some windows some doors it's gonna get pretty funky in there but yeah, we're going to let this cool off for maybe 10, 20 minutes. And while we're doing that, we're going to get our scale ready because we're going to go ahead. When you put your, your trim into the oven, whatever it weighed going in is not going to weigh the same amount when you bring it out. So we're going to let it cool off for a minute. And then we're going to weigh it again, see how much trim we have to deal with so we can weigh it uh, equally with the same amount as the uh, coconut oil. So we're going to let this um, decarb trim cool off for about 10 minutes. Then we'll come back in and we'll weigh it and see what we got. Wow, I have four and a half ounces. You know what? Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to stay within the limit. 
go ahead and do three ounces as planned. Stick to the script. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So now we're gonna do with the next step. We're gonna take our coconut oil, all three cups, and I'm gonna put that into my pot. Okay, now that I have my three cups of coconut oil into my pot, I'm gonna turn my fire up to low. Um, you wanna turn your fire on low. You don't want this to boil, so it's gonna be a slow process of um, the infusion with this can of uh, coconut oil. So definitely keep your, you know, you definitely don't want any boiling to go on, be going on, no bubbling, I mean, no boiling. So keep it on low to maybe, you know, number two on your, uh, <clears throat> on your stove. We're gonna let that heat up to, um, melt all the way down. Right now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna introduce our uh, liquid lecithin into our coconut oil. Now introducing our um, liquid lecithin into this, like I said before, what this does is make sure everything mixes equally in our uh, making of can of oil. So I'm gonna use one teaspoon this is a half a teaspoon measure so i'm going to be using it's going to take two of these to make one teaspoon but anyway i'm going to use one teaspoon per cup of can of uh, per cup of coconut oil so i have three cups of coconut oil meaning i'm going to use uh, three teaspoons of this liquid lecithin so I'm going to go ahead and add my liquid lecithin. Three teaspoons of liquid lecithin. Now once you've added your liquid lecithin into your coconut oil, you want to stir it up real good. Make sure it's Stir it up evenly and properly and good stir. I'm actually gonna let that sit and develop for a couple of minutes before we move to the next step. And now that we have our liquid lecithin mixed in with our coconut oil, it's been sitting for a couple of minutes, gave it time to nice get nicely developed, and now it's time to incorporate our decarbonated trim. Okay, now that we added our trim, the first thing you want to do, um, because the temperature will so, be so high on the oil, you want to make sure you lower um, your temperature back down when you add your trim to your oil. So you want to drop your temperature back down to low and let it just simmer very low because you don't want any bubbles or anything going on when you uh, add your trim. So now that we added our trim, we got our temperature dropped down to low to a simmer. We're gonna let this sit for, because I have so much, I'm gonna let mine sit for two hours. But say you were doing maybe seven grams per cup or 14 grams per cup, then you could let it sit for an hour, hour and a half. But because I'm doing an ounce and I have, you know, for each cup, so I have three ounces and three cups, I'm going to let mine sit for two, out, uh, two hours and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to stir it uh, maybe every 15 minutes. Okay, our mixture has been doing its thing for two hours now. I've been coming in here and I've been stirring it up every 15 minutes. 
and just giving it a little press down, squeezing whatever's left in these um, this trim, I'm squeezing it out. But every 15 minutes I came in and just kind of gave it a slight stir. But now that it's been sitting for two hours, we can go ahead and move to the next step. Okay, the next step is we're going to need something to put our can of oil in. So whether you use a mason jar or a Pyrex bowl, cup or bowl, right now, just something to hold that can of that oil because the oil is going to be hot. So you don't really want to use anything plastic or anything that will melt. So right now I'm going to use this big, this big Pyrex bowl because I'm going to use, once it cools down a little bit, I'm going to use this to pour it. I'm going to use it to pour it back into the original uh, coconut oil container. So for this step, you're going to need some cheesecloth or some kind of strainer. Um, I like using cheesecloth because it gets more, it get more of the, uh, the leaves and the stems or whatever's left in the oil. It keeps it out because all I want is the oil in my container. So I cut a piece of cheesecloth. I use cheesecloth. Like I said, you can use any kind of strainer, but you don't want any of the, the, um, the leaves or the stems getting into your oil, you just want this to oil. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this cheesecloth, I'm gonna place this cheesecloth over the top of my Pyrex bowl, and I'm gonna take a rubber band and put it around my cheesecloth, like so, put a little indenture in it, like so, so, there you go. Got my little cheesecloth over my Pyrex bowl, and I got the rubber band to hold the uh, cheesecloth down. Because what we're gonna do next is pour this into our Pyrex bowl. Press that down slightly to get all of the oil out of there. Because I have so much trim, I'm going to scoop this trim out, just put it into a different container so I have room all the rest of the trim that I'm going to put in here and try to soak out. So make sure you push this down and get all you can out of it. And I'll show you how we're going to get that out later. But for now, let's just squeeze this. Get as much of this out as we can. And add more. Now that you have all of your ingredients into your strainer just gonna let that sit press it down some strain as much as you can out what I do at this point I take my cheesecloth keep it from falling into the pan I'm going to take that and just give it a squeeze. Now, <clears throat> What's left in your cheesecloth is pretty probably the most potent part. So what you want to do is take 
out of your trim, put it in a cheesecloth and squeeze as much of that oil out as you can. So I'm gonna cut me another piece of cheesecloth, put all this trim into another piece of cheesecloth and see how much I can squeeze out. Now that we have our can of oil strained, um, we're gonna let it cool off for a few minutes so we can transport it into its resting place or our container. So I'm gonna let this cool off for a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my container. Okay, now that our can of oil has been sitting for a couple of minutes, it's cooled down quite a bit. I think it's safe to go ahead and pour it into your container in which you'll be storing it in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this. As you can see, it's a nice dark green color. It's gonna to turn to a light green color uh, shortly. Got a little bit of leaves and stuff in there. I don't want in my oil, so. And there you have it. I'm gonna put my top on here. And there you have your can of oil. So if I can take this so you can see it. There's your can of oil. At this point, you set this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and you're all done. So this pretty much concludes this episode of how to make CBD can of oil. In result, uh, this is what three cups look like. I'm pretty sure that I lost a little bit uh, in the cooking process. You may lose maybe a gram or two in the um, cooking process. But now that we're all done, you can leave this out or you can set it. Like I said, I'm going to set mine in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. But after that, it's all done. We're all done here. I thank y'all for... Uh, watching, tuning in to another episode of Underground Roars. I'm Ben, your host, Iceberg Stem, and that's how you make CBD can of oil. Stay posted, stay tuned for the next video where I'll be showing you how to make that high potency can of oil. This is the CBD. I'm going to show you how to make that high potency can of oil. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, Keep growing. Peace.